Welcome to Shattered Reality with your hosts, Kate Valentine and Farusha. To our main programming, which is the very interesting, fascinating, intelligent guest that we have for you today, Dr. Ross Dunseith. Dr. Dunseith um, does work at um, the Division of Perceptual Studies at the University of of Virginia. He is also associated with the Cedar Creek Institute, which may be another name for the Department of Perceptual Studies. I'm sure he'll set us straight with that. And he works with such parapsychological luminaries as James Tucker and Dr. Ed Kelly and the uh, late Dr. Ian Stevenson. So uh, I'd like you to welcome Dr. Ross Dunseith to our show, and uh, his specialty is psychokinesis. Dr. Dunseith, do you mind if we call you Ross? Well, no, go right ahead. Thank you. So I do do EEGs and MRIs, and I was wondering, uh, since you do have some of the subjects that do this, have you seen any uh, anything that would take the so-called paranormal into the normal range? I mean, have you any evidence of changes in brain waves or anything of that nature? Well, of course, that's that's what we're after. Mm-hmm. And um, I've got a, a bunch of preliminary data. Uh, we just came off of a year-and-a-half pilot study. Uh, and there's two, two tasks that we have to make happen for these kinds of studies. Um, One of them is we have to be able to reliably detect quote-unquote PK uh, and do it electronically so we can merge that data in simultaneously with uh, the physiology, the EEG data. Uh, So we end up having to run these things in controlled trials. They're, They're timed. You have to do several of them. I got my standard uh, protocol right now is 48 trials, uh, 48 seconds each, alternating between rest and PK. And uh, as as you can see, that's that's a difficult task to get somebody to turn PK on and off like that. Oh yeah. Uh, and also in the process of doing that, we accumulate mountains of data. So. Um, and it took a while as well to get all these various uh, protocols uh, programmed and all the hardware and everything running synchronized and and whatnot. Uh, so my pilot study that I just finished, I've got uh, significant results. Um, and out of those significant results in terms of getting PK hits, um, I was running EEGs on, I would say, two really good uh, prospects for seeing something. But what I can say preliminarily is that in one case, the person has a really odd, you know, EEG. It's a very odd activation um, in the PK mode versus his rest mode. Hmm. And it's it's like a changing in frequency, the, uh, the spectral peak, Frequency is, is shifting as you go along his head. Um, so mapping across spatially, across the brain, there's a, a different frequency. From a certain uh, part of the brain is a different yeah, frequency? Yeah, yeah. And, and then also there's uh, some weird anti-symmetry. So one side is set up in, in one way, and the other side is, is sort of the opposite of it. Hmm. Um, that, in other words, like one side of the of the head, the, the the electrodes have a spectral peak at a certain frequency, and the other side, it's a it's a deep dip. Like that frequency is like gone; it's missing. So, oh my goodness! Yeah, it's um, is this, this is a, all very the, is, very this, preliminary. Does this have to do with the dominance of the right or left hemisphere, or am I listening wrong? Am I hearing wrong? I'm not getting it. Uh, at this point, I couldn't tell you. Okay. I, I don't know and, if it's showing dominance or not. And then one other question about this, in a very broad sense, I know you're measuring uh, you know, everything uh, to a very fine degree, but in a very broad sense, is the person 
um, this particular person in uh, as an alpha state when they're uh, moving things, or are they in a you know in a beta, or is there is there any like a broader um, place that you can say that generally it, it happens in alpha, for instance, or it happens in delta? Oh well, that's that was the odd thing about this particular person that it, it was extending along a range of frequencies that you couldn't even say that anymore it was running from like theta all the way down through alpha wow. so you could you couldn't really say oh this person's in an alpha state well you could say well part of their brain's in an alpha state but this other part over here is in the peaking in the theta frequency wow <laughs> did, did you yeah. use, did you use a control subject at the same time was there someone whose eeg you were measuring and finding sort of what i guess we would be referred to as normal eeg no um that's uh they do that uh, it's called a standard eeg or whatever based on a person's age and and sex and whatnot there's kind of what you would expect to see in a standard EEG, and, and well, eventually we'll trundle that out and compare. But I can already say this person doesn't have a standard looking okay. EEG. Like you see, it sounds like nothing like it actually. <laughs> no, I've never seen. Any. I've seen a fair amount of EEGs over the years, and I have not seen one that looked like that. But so, this is not to say that you have to have an EEG that looks like that in order to make PK happen. That's. Uh, we don't know yet. But but if you had been in a lab doing EEG, say for medical research or something, and you suddenly saw this one, you go, "Well, wait a minute, it just this does not look normal." Is that the case? I if I saw something that looked like that, yeah, I would be interesting. interesting. Checking out the equipment, right? But this is just one subject, so ostensibly other subjects have provided other data. And, and we're in the early stages of crunching that. So uh, we're we're launched into the formal study now, in which uh, we're only accepting what we would call PK experts into the study. Cool. Uh, so in order to get into the study, you've got to like uh, pass a uh, preliminary exam. We'll call it uh, the screening test. And uh, we have one person that's done that so far. Demonstrable yeah. PK, we will call Yeah, he, he did it uh, remotely. So we run remote experiments as well. That's one wow. of our screening tools. We can get a person on Skype and let them run through the protocol, 48 trials, you know, 48 seconds each, rest versus PK. And he got significant results. Hmm. So he, he visited the lab. He's, he's a healer. He does energy healing. Oh, I, I think I might have an idea who that might be. I don't know. I guess we're not at liberty to say the person's name. I won't say. Oh, no, I don't think he would mind. It's Ed, it's Edwards. Ed Edwards, yes, yes. I yeah. was just speaking with uh, our mutual friend, uh, uh, Leslie, about uh, Ed Edwards. And um, so, yeah. Well, just just to set the record straight, I know Dr. Ross Dunseith mm -hmm. um, as a uh, person who is a fellow member of the professional division of the Monroe Institute.